It's Toby from Heavyweight MMA with Mr. Golden Boy Colby Thickness, fresh out of Windang, promising um, <laughs> professional MMA fighter, the champion of Windang at the current and potential champion of Australia in the future. Um, <laughs> one of the main training partners, I would say, of Alex Volkanovsky. Bro, today I want to have a chat about um, the big fight coming up next week, Belal Muhammad versus Vincente Luque. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one, bro? I think it's... Honestly, great matchmaking by the UFC. According to Typology, I'm not sure UFC rankings, how much they sort of waver in difference, but you got number five versus number six. Both guys have sort of had their ups and downs in their careers. And right now seems to be the point where they're both managing to like really sort of well um, put it together sort of thing. Probably should have been spoken better than that, but I'm sure <laughs> well, that's my drift. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, the highlight of this fight for me and when I'm researching the highlight, which shows how much I'm interested in this one, is that uh, Bilal Muhammad actually wrestled, wrestled at Bogan High School. <laughs> I'm thinking, Bogan? So I reckon I'm just thinking about Bogan High School, what they'd be like people in like parking in early model fucking Fords and Holdens and I don't know, talking about how the footy is while they drink a VB. <laughs> I don't know how they didn't even know if they'd have a wrestling program. Have an RBA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, onto the onto the fight again. So, looking at these guys, are uh, like tail of the tape, similar age. Luke is thirty versus Muhammad thirty three. Luke is one hundred and eighty centimeter height, one hundred and ninety two centimeter reach. Um, Bala Muhammad's one seventy eight centimeter height and one eighty three centimeter uh, reach. So nine centimeters given to Vincente, which is a it's a kind of decent thing when he's a like a gun striker, yeah. Uh, record of Luke, 29 fights, 21 wins, mostly KOs, 11 KOs, eight subs. Um, Bilal Muhammad, 24 fights, 20 wins, four KOs, one sub, 15 decisions. So that kind of is telling you why Muhammad's not the biggest name in the world, right? Like he's a damn good fighter, but he kind of just grinds out decisions, right? Like that's how he wins in general. And it's unfortunate, but that's why he's not the, the one of those big names that everyone wants to watch, yeah? Yeah, exactly right. Like don't be wrong with guys – number fifth or sixth in the world sort of thing for a reason. He's one of the best guys in that division. But yeah, it's like, it's just the, as much as it sucks, it's almost, it is like the entertainment business at the end of the day sort of thing. And you want guys who are going to go out there and entertain. Hardcores and people who enjoy the cage wrestling, the war wrestling, they can appreciate and enjoy what he does. But if you're trying to sell sort of Bilal Muhammad as a, here's this guy, you can watch him for possibly 25 minutes. It's going to turn a lot of people off with his style. Obviously, he's still looking for a finish. He's still hunting for the knockouts and that. But he does play it smart. If he knows it's not there, he's not going to try and force it. He's just going to keep sticking on sort of what's working with his takedowns, controls and stuff like that. And obviously, he's on what a one, two, three, four. He's on his six-fight win streak, obviously, besides the eye poke against Liam, which nobody can blame him for. That was very, it's a very nasty eye poke. But... Then you got Luke, four five win streak. He lost to Thompson. I think even though MMA map, you say Luke lost to Thompson below one, it was a different fight sort of thing. Yeah, completely Obviously, different Luke, fight. Eh? You can't exactly compare right. them. They're different skill sets. The striker way they striker versus striker together. versus grappler yeah. versus striker sort of thing. So okay. I think that it's cool to see they have a common opponent, but you really can't read too much into it. And I think this fight's just going to come down. I'm surprised Luke, oh, I'm not surprised he's a favorite, but he's a bigger favorite than I sort of thought. I think a few people are sort of sleeping on uh, Muhammad because I think if Bilal can get him down early in the first round and then really grind him out and get him up against the fence, sap his arms and sort of really start to drain him out and put that grinding pressure on him, I think it can really turn the tides over it being a five-round fight compared to a three-round fight because Bilal's style is built he is fit and he can go over five whereas Luke is that very sort of explosive I'm sure his gasting is going to be there for the whole fight but will his explosive and his power and sort of his path to victory by them big shots still be there yeah man I think uh those those matchups you mentioned before about um Muhammad fighting Thompson and, and Luke fighting Thompson I think out of those two fights the one you can look at a little bit is Thompson Muhammad because that's that is pretty much the striker versus the kind of wrestler, the way he fought that fight. And that's probably his key to victory, like you said, which is, you know, he did some, he shot in super fast and, uh, and ground him out a bit, took his power away a little bit. And I think that's where you look at their records. Obviously 
you know, Muhammad is going to be the guy that's going to try and just grind, 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 and maybe look for a finish in a later couple of rounds, which he doesn't always get to do because he's usually not a five round fighter. So he's going to be hoping to get that finish in round four, round five, which he has more yep. potential. You look at the Vincentes, he's a finisher, man. He finishes with KOs and subs. He hardly even has any decisions on his record. So the thing is, even Vincent, they were saying he wants to make an impression because he wants to get that title shot, you know? So he wants to get in. The way he's talking, he's going to go in there and try and get a finish. Um, obviously, Muhammad isn't that guy. He's going to try and get out of the first couple of rounds where he's in most danger, grind, 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 take away that KO power, hopefully just avoid the submissions and, and uh, you know, and take him out or get a points win. So yeah, there's two completely different skill sets coming together and it's going to be kind of interesting to see how they, how they collide. Yeah. It'll be, obviously it was six years ago now and both these guys have improved a lot, but I wonder how much um, Luke previously knocking out Bilal will sort of play into this sort of thing. If it will sort of give him that, because realistically, even though it's ages ago, if you fight a guy a couple of years ago and like I knocked him out first round, it's a, much better mindset going into fight like yes i can do it again sort of thing so i think that's gonna really give him a confidence and so maybe that's sort of swaying the odds and everything but yeah, that's what swaying the odds for sure you're always they always look yeah. back and say okay that fought and he got knocked out so it's pretty obvious that he's gonna probably win again and yeah. i and for luke he knows he's got that physical power or whatever to be able to hurt muhammad if he lands one of those shots again yeah but muhammad said uh someone asked him in an interview i'd you know, does that play on your mind? He goes, I thought it would play on my mind in my next fight and it didn't. So I've had several fights since then. Yeah. It's not something he sort of thinks about. So it sounds like he's kind of gotten past it. Let's see once he faces the guy that actually did it though. Yeah, exactly. I think it'll be, it's, oh, oh I guess. Only KO I can't loss, read though. too much into things like this. But I was going to say, it's interesting to see when they're like, they get face to face and like how the energy sort of match and that sort of thing. If Bilal comes out real confident or if he sort of comes that little bit sort of, more reserved, trying to stay quiet and things like that. Even though you can't read yeah. too much into it, it'd just be cool to see what's his mind. So he's like, oh, I'm just going to, don't even worry about it. Say, if he comes out sort of real confidence and like, nah, I'm going to sort of uh, rewrite this sort of thing my way. And like, sort of, he might see this as like catapult and he gets a good finish here because it's going to be Leon versus Usman. But then I get Hums. If Hums up wins tomorrow, I guess he's pretty much guaranteed next in line after Leon and Usman. Is or maybe before, yet, maybe though? even before. Or maybe before, because if that's yeah. not even fuck, man, man imagine wants they to watch it. Leon out of that, eh? <laughs> I'd be pissed. So, yeah, did you watch the Chiesa fight, Luke Chiesa? Like, that kind of gives a secret Is, for Muhammad. Asked him, eh? Yeah, but it gives, it yep, gives yep. Muhammad the secret on how to approach it, which was the same, which was like a kind of lull him into thinking it's a standing and a standing match and then shoot, shoot and take yeah. him down. And then obviously on the ground, he has to be careful of darses and guillotines, but, but uh, she has to sh show that it can be done pretty easily for a good wrestler. Right. Can just, uh, cause Luke is a, a primarily stand up. you know, started with karate, went to Muay Thai and, and BJJ. Now he's a BJJ black belt. But he seems like slightly open for that wrestling double or, or whatever. So, and that's what Muhammad obviously has been working on for a long time is his wrestling. He's an all rounder, but I think that he looks for the path of victory depending on the opponent. And the path of victory for this guy is to sap his energy and how best to do that is wrestling. He shouldn't get into too much of a BJJ <laughs> grappling game where he could get in trouble. But if he can just control and punch and that, he might be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a lot of clinching, a lot of hanging on a lot of fence work and a real sort of, don't be wrong. I'm, I could be wrong, but like, it, I don't think it's going to be the most entertaining fight for the casual where you're going to be like, Oh, I'm on the edge for my seat for 25 minutes. Don't be wrong. Luke is probably going to have his flurries, his explosiveness, which is going to sort of really get intense. But I think if it goes below way, a lot of it's just going to be like, Oh, there he goes. He got the takedown. Now he's just going to stick to him for another two minutes back on the feet. Luke has a few good exchanges. He gets tired, not so much tired, but his explosive so that isn't there. Bilal starts to get his reads and then he takes him down, does again sort of thing and see that sort of play out throughout the rounds. See Luke's calf kicks, man, they're nasty. That's one one of his key sort of weapons. Like you need to get a few of these guys. That's one of their key weapons now. Yeah. And he smashes people's calves, man. Well, good to see. Muhammad's like not one of those skinny long guys. So I don't know how his how his calves can handle these kicks, but yeah, that's a that's an issue for them. And I wonder if they really thought about that, like turning the shin out or or what they're gonna do for that one. Cause that's a little piece of the puzzle they have to solve as well. Yeah. He could even possibly start trying to 
obviously not straight away, but if he checks a few, reach down and catch him and just use that as an entry of a kick sort of thing, especially when he, if he is grappling, like he gets him tired and Luke's just sort of throwing the leg kicks, not so much to dig in, but just to throw something at him. If you don't commit to retracting it fast enough, good grapplers would definitely, well, wrestlers would definitely sort of catch that kick on their leg and shoot the hand down the same side to catch that single leg sort of ankle pick takedown. So it could be interesting to see if Bilal sort of adapts to that later on during a fight. But like you said, he's going to have to address it early because there's only, especially if you're trying to grapple with someone, footwork's incredibly important and there's only sort of calf kicks you can take before it starts to really add up and affect your movement. I don't know, like when you're talking about though, catching that calf kick, I feel like Vicente, 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 Vicente is a bit... uh maybe slightly too fast and too agile for that to really oh, definitely not him. early definitely not yeah. early I'm yeah he slows down though right? and, and for yeah. that for that the, for me the fact is that if it's a like if if Vicente can smash in the first one or two rounds it's his you know like if he can land his punches if he can keep it on the feet he could potentially knock out Muhammad again but I think as yeah. soon as it gets to the third round I think it swings in Muhammad's favor uh, just because of the fact that you watch Luke is a bit more explosive. He loses a little bit more um, power as the fight goes on. He doesn't look as impressive in the third. Although, did you see that fight when he uh, when he smashed uh, Randy Brown? He was fighting Brown and it was like 10 seconds to go in the third round and he just smashed him with a knee in the head and then finished him. So I guess he still does have power, but um, he feels, he looks slow. He looks slow. He doesn't look the same man in the third as he does in the yeah, first and yep. second. So. Yeah, that explosiveness I, is gone, sort of thing. I get what you mean. It's a bit more labored to his shots than that. All the pros are picking uh, Vicente Luque, like as a majority. So probably like eight out of ten are picking, um, yep. are picking him to get the win. They just think he's too good, uh, and obviously the history says that as well. Only a couple like Muhammad. It seems like maybe out of out of um, respect or something, because you know they've got relationships and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Exactly what do you think, right. man? What, what's your final call? What are we betting the house on today? I want to go Muhammad by unanimous decision. I think he might face a bit of adversity in the first or second round, but then I think he's probably going to steal the last three to four rounds possibly, I think, and get the decision that way. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like my heart says Muhammad. I kind of he's been a bit more in the limelight lately. You hear him talking, he's kind of a good guy. And uh, you know, you see him, it's kind of he's on a rise, right? He's gaining a bit of popularity. He's looking, he's a bit bit more in the title picture now, but for something, something just tells me that Luke is going to smoke him, eh? I don't know. I just get that feeling for this fight. So I'm going to say Luke KO in one or two. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I like it. It is, it's going to be a close fight. Yeah. Yeah. 